What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I originally was planning on making a day of eating today, but I'm not. So instead, we're going to go into the city, Washington, D.C., and get some sick angles, dude. Let's go. All right, guys. So we are in D.C. because, again, it's still a while away, but I want to search for some apartments. I want to find the area that I want to live in, and I want to see what the buildings are like because even though certain apartments aren't going to be available, I can still get that feel, and I want the apartment to just, like, I want to fall in love with the building, I want to fall in love with the amenities, and I won't know that until I experience it. So right now, I'm in 14th Street, or they call U Street. There's a lot of different areas of DC, and I'll talk about, ooh, hoagies, dude. Hoagie, dude. They didn't have fat for Italian dressing. That would have been like the best, but I got onions and mushrooms. Look at that. Look at that, dude. There's nothing I love more than a freaking cheesesteak, whether that's a chicken cheesesteak or a steak cheesesteak. Here we go. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Pretty good. Okay, so there's different areas of DC, and now there's a lot more than what I'm telling you, but Little Max is over here, okay? Okay, so DC has a couple different areas that I. So DC has a couple different areas that I. So DC has a couple of different areas that I normally visit. You have Little Max right over here. You have DuPont Circle right over here. You have 14th Street right over here. And then you got the Navy Yard right over here. Max, Flex Dude, DuPont Circle, 14th Street. Those are the areas that I visit the most. And those are the areas that I'm kind of looking at, except not really the max one because I already, I already live there. Alright, so I looked at three apartment buildings today and honestly, I wasn't a huge fan. One of them didn't even have in-ground parking and I need to park the freaking cert. That's a requirement. And then the other two, the floor plans were just, nah, I'm showing one on the screen right now. And it's just like, I didn't love it. Like I just, I, I need to fall in love with where I'm gonna live. So 14th Street, although a cool area, it's where I kind of go out. The apartment buildings I look at today, hell no, dude. I mean, just look at that beauty of a vehicle over there. It needs a place to park. So I just went and looked at one more apartment building. This one is actually right down the street from where I currently live. It's still in Virginia, but it's about five to 10 minutes walking over to Georgetown, right across the bridge. Extremely close, amazing views, amazing buildings. It's brand new, it was built this year. Wall-to-wall -wall windows, just really modern apartments. It has that luxurious feel to it. It has definitely a lot more of what I'm looking for. You're just not right in DC, but you're really freaking close. That's the downside. If you do decide to move into DC, you're gonna sacrifice the luxurious feel because they have older buildings. So you gotta have to decide what you want. But the biggest selling point about this one is that there's a freaking Chipotle right there, man. Well, hold on, let me focus on this. You, you need to see it. That's a Chipotle. What a time to be alive. Apartment, Chipotle. Look at this. Could you imagine just walking out of my apartment? Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm there. This is where I wanna be all the time. I don't need any other food. I just need you. I only need you. Do you wanna know what's the worst about filming in public? It's not walking around with the camera. It's the fact that there's a lot of times, like that apartment talk I just did, I refilmed that clip like 18 times and everyone's just like, God, this guy's an idiot. God, this guy's an idiot. God, this guy's an idiot. You get it because I'm doing it over and over again? No, okay. Like what more do you need in life besides a Chipotle right next to where you live? Not, not, nothing. You need nothing. I've got a package waiting for me at the front desk that I've been waiting on for a long time. Yum, 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 Good morning, guys. Welcome to the next day. I decided to make 
Lunch for breakfast, crazy back. So I'd be like, well, why wearing this? Well, this jacket was what was in the package last night. I ended up uh, immediately start streaming on Twitch. I ended up playing a scary game. Here, here's some clips from it. Oh, shit! God. Okay. Okay. Okay, dude. Oh, shit! Oh, God! Run away! There's a girl after me! That's the worst possible thing that could ever happen to me! Oh, where'd she go? Yeah. Typical girl. Yep. Yep. Typical girl. Just never... Ha! Super spooky. So for lunch, we have a barbecue chicken sandwich. And you might be like, Max, that's processed, dude. It's got preservatives. Are we, are we past it? Are we past it? Can we move on? Perfect. Then I found some hot dog buns that are shaped like hamburger buns. What a time to be a leaf. And then I found these sweet potato fries that are spicy and chipotle seasoning. It's like they reached into my soul and they knew exactly how to be, they knew, they knew, they knew me. Those aren't spicy at all. That's so sick. Let's try this BBQ out, dude. Delicious. Chocolate milk. Mm. <laughs> what does that remind you of? It's literally impossible to make really crispy fries in the oven. You might be like, Max, I know the secret. No, you don't. No one does. No one can make crispy fries in the oven. It's a fact. Kind of a relaxing day today. We sold out of everything on the Everford Apparel site, so there's no orders to be done. We just have to deal with any customer support issues of errors that I made. Uh, I'm just waiting on all the bulk items for the winter launch, and since it's not going to be here in time to launch before Christmas, I don't need to like rush into all the marketing. I can pretty much have the entire month of December to market to launch in January, and then I just have to give this final approval on the jacket, but we'll talk about that in a second because I need to eat. I'm so skinny. Oh, yeah, dude. Traffic, dude. So sick. Guys, if there's one thing I love in this world, it's just traffic. Like, if I could be in traffic all the time, I would. Let's play a game. It's called Two Lies and a Truth. I love traffic. I am really sad and lonely because I'm single and I hate Chipotle. Can you figure it out? I don't know if you guys know this, but I drive a Cert. And there's a special new Grand Cherokee that just got released recently. It's called a Trackhawk and it's pretty sick. And I've considered upgrading from this bad boy next year, but a dealership near my house just got one and I just I just want to see it. I just want to see it. Nothing's going to happen. I just want to see it. Well, we can't test drive it today even though on the website it says in stock. They sold it. It was pre-ordered for someone. Do you know who it was? It was a player on the Washington Wizards. Yet another reason why I hate sports. Sports prevented me from test driving the track hop. So before we get into the squats to wrap up the video, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of business talk. You've been wanting to see a little bit of my brain process on getting from original sample to final completed sample. So for example, here is the tech jacket. It is so sick, dude. It comes out in January, but a lot of work has gone into this. A lot of thought has gone into this. We originally had some features like a mesh inside pocket. We got rid of that. The original hem cinch cord, it had the fabric would go into the pocket and you'd be able to feel it inside of it. We got rid of that. We changed that. Also, we added things like inside zipper pockets and we just tweaked it to be ever so perfect. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of business insight and you, I got the whiteboard right here, but it's not gonna be boring. We never keep the, the whiteboard boring, dude. We keep it so you don't even know what I'm gonna say. And we got a monster with a little bit of ice cream down there. So this is Max's brain hole on how we get sick apparel, dude. Wow, this is gonna be so fun, I can't wait. Are you excited for this? I am. So. First up, after we've already gotten the fabric and we've gotten everything in, right? The material, it's in its conceptual form. You have to remember that I am pathetic, yet perfect. I have been a true medium almost ever since I was born. When I was 12 years old, I wore a medium, and I'm 28 years old now, and I wear a medium. It's a blessing and a curse, but what's great is, like, whenever I get uh, samples, I make the, the piece of clothing fit me perfectly for a medium, and then I scale everything else because I know that I'm a true medium. If I get a medium from another brand, I don't need a sizing video, I don't need to, like, try it on. 
if, if it's a medium and it doesn't fit me, then it's not a good medium. So I try to make it a perfect medium for your boy. But that moves us into the second issue, which is bicep curls, because although I'm pathetic yet perfect and I'm a perfect medium, there are individuals out there that are a little bit different than me. And although you can't create a perfect piece of apparel that's gonna fit everyone in the entire world, you have to think about things such as people doing a lot more bicep curls. People are gonna have different body measurements, so you kinda of wanna make the apparel um, somewhat appeal to more people. So for example, I have really, really jacked forearms and I have insanely small biceps. So if a piece of clothing is maybe a slightly slim on my forearms, I know that the mass majority of people may not have large jacked forearms like me. On the contrary, if I have a little extra fabric in the bicep area, I know that most people are going to have normal sized biceps and not these little pathetic pythons. And so that's okay. So I kind of try to find a middle ground where it's not too loose on me, but not too tight because we want to appeal to the masses of those who actually lift. Now the next step, once we figure out the sizing, we have the sizing all perfect, dude. It's so, stop that. So sick. We move. We move on to Captain Max because I am the captain now. And what's great about creating apparel is we can literally create any feature we want on the clothing. We can add any feature in. We can take anything out. We can change any measurements. If I want anything different, you can do that because I am the freaking captain. Similar with the soft shell, I added inside zipper pockets because I never see ja a lot of jackets don't have inside zipper pockets. And I'm like, what the hell? I want to put stuff right near my boob all the time. I need more pockets. Give me more pockets. I can adjust anything, any feature that I want in this jacket. If it's freaking possible, your boy can do it. I am the captain now. That's super sick. So we add all the features that we want right? Anything that I see in a store, I'm like, oh, this is great, but I wish I had that. I can create it, dude. Next, it goes into the Yeezy drips. The issue with being the captain and adding anything, it's kind of like if you had Yeezys and let's say, let's say that I was painting the Sistine Chapel and you came in with your Yeezys and you're like, oh my gosh, Max, that's so sick. And I, I dropped some paint and it went on your Yeezys. If I just put paint on one of your shoes, right? I can't just replace that shoe. I can't just replace just the sole that got the paint on it, right? I have to replace both of your stupid Yeezys, right? So the more features that you put on your item, the more zippers, the more sick things, is the more possibilities that one of those can mess up. So if I have five zippers on a jacket and one of the, that, that's five zippers where one of those can go wrong, right? So if one zipper goes wrong, I have to replace the whole jacket. So the, the least amount of extra accessory stuff, it, you're gonna have less issues. So sometimes, be, less is more, you're gonna have less issues. And you don't want to have zippers break, but they do. So if you had one zipper, you have less of a chance of it messing up than if you had five zippers, right? You understand what I'm saying there? So Yeezy drips, you have to think about that. So you don't want a million features on your jackets because that's, it just, you know, Yeezy drips, dude. Next up is the package swag. So we have all the sizing down, we have all the features, we've, uh, you know, factored in, you know, a lot of the errors that could happen. We go into the package swag. Now, every time that I come out with an apparel or a piece of product, I want to make the presentation value. I want to make you feel like I, I try to put out premium apparel, but when you get it, I want that experience to be a premium experience. So I try to do everything that I can to increase the quality of the packaging, you know, sliding zipper bags, custom, you know, custom labeling on the bags, custom hang tags, little things to add, you know, they're going to cost me money, but it's going to add value, I think, over to the product as well as, you know, even like little things like the sizing stickers with colors. It not only, I think, looks more professional, it's going to help us make less errors in this run. So even the packaging has a kind of a double feature where it's, it's higher presentation value. And it also allows us to make less errors because we have these, you know, features on the bags. It allows us to kind of like realize what we're grabbing. And that, so once we have all that, we move into the potato love and hate. All the things are done. We ship the packages out and, you know, you, the consumer and the peeps, get the products and you either love them or hate them so we get feedback i listen to what you guys say if you absolutely love a product that i've put all this work into how can i make it better and if you hate something or i find out that there's a defect i take notes i figure out how i can make it better i'm always looking for ways to improve the product to improve the experience for you guys so then once i figure out all this stuff i go right back here and i start all over again dude in the past three weeks, I have squatted one time in Europe. Yeah. Tree fitty, dude. Five reps, dude. It's gonna be so fun.
of us squats, I've done a little pinch with the belt. It might mean I'm getting fat. Look at that. <laughs> I'm the king of hamstring curls. If someone try to challenge me to hamstring curls, no one can handle these ham dog millionaires. No one. Look at them. Look at them. Respect them. Look at this. All day, baby. I'm three away from the whole stack. Set to 15. One handed. Behind my back. Throwing them ham dogs, baby. You know, I see a lot of things on the interwebs about how the extension is really bad for your knees. And I haven't made up my mind whether or not I believe it. I'm leaning more towards on the side that it's probably not good for your knee to like, just like, I just don't think it's that great. So when I do do this exercise, I don't lock out my leg, right? I just kind of do, about right there. Just like this, just keeping that tension on them quads, baby. You might be like, Max, what quads, dude? I know, I'm working on them. That's why I'm, I'm doing sets of 6,000 at a time. I stopped at 4,000 to start this talking segment and 6,000. Also, you know how I model all my gear around a perfect medium? I designed these compression pants to be very, very tight on my little legs so you can imagine how compressive they are on people with actual quads and actual calves. Best compression pants in the game. I'm not trying to come out with good compression gear. I'm not trying to come out with great compression gear. I'm trying to come out with the best damn compression gear you've ever freaking put on your butt cheeks, man. And girls, it's coming for girls too. Your, your butt cheeks are important to me too. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Gonna end it here. Hope you have a great day, a great weekend, and a great rest of 2017. Hope you tune in next time for my next video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Smash that thumbs up button and keep it real, dude. Ow, peace.